Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Turok. Today we're doing a quick video of the Kyosho USA One. Now, to be honest with you, I've been having a few issues with this truck. I've had it for about a few weeks now. Didn't have any problems with the break-in. I used the break-in ring for the first two, I think three tanks. Um, but then I took it off the last two and did some, you know, half throttle, quarter throttle runs for the remaining two, three tanks. Uh, and it broke in really nicely. The engine has really nicely loosened up. But I've been having some problems, as you've been uh, seeing from the title, with the three-speed transmission. And here is the three-speed transmission. We'll get some close-up shots of that as well. But I was having some issues with it not shifting at all, or it not sounding like it was shifting. And I know there's some uh, things that it may have been stuck in second gear. Sometimes it felt like it was stuck in second gear. Other times it was in first because I was able to pop wheelies pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, per page 37 in the manual, and a couple of videos online, a shout out to, I think it's Anthony Grompton uh, from Australia. I believe it's Australia, shout out, sorry if I'm wrong, mate. But um, he, you know, he's got a video out there on how to adjust the clutch and uh, the, the clutches in here. So which basically adjust your shift timing from uh, shift at one to two and two to three. Uh, so I started tweaking with those and pretty much wasn't getting anywhere. I don't know what was going on. Um, it was literally... It sounded like the engine was redlining, like, ee -oh, ee -oh, ee -oh, like it was trying to shift, but it just wasn't catching properly. And no matter how many times I tried to adjust, it just wasn't working. Now, one thing that I really appreciate about the Kyosho three-speed transmission is it's easy access from the outside. I was able to quickly do a run, test out if it was shifting, to, uh, you know, turn the engine off and uh, quickly adjust both uh, cams within, you know, a, a minute or two uh, because of the open design of this. Um, I've heard that the HPI Savage uh, XL, which is one of the other few uh, three-speed uh, monster trucks out there, it's um, one of, only one of the shifts you can uh, uh, um, adjust from the outside, and I believe you've got to actually take out the entire transmission and take it apart to adjust that other shift. So that is one great option, uh, one great feature of this is that it's very easy to adjust. Now, I've already taken it apart uh, the other day. As you'll see, I've got some parts laid out right here, and... I found that the third spur gear was actually stripped inside. It's in the nub where the clutch is supposed to engage, was stripped. I don't know how that happened, but that wasn't engaging. Um, I was getting like a one to three shift sometimes. I Sometimes it felt like I was getting a two to three shift. Sometimes it even felt like I was getting sometimes a two to one to three shift. I didn't know what was going on. I was scratching my head, banging my head. I think I ran like four tanks through trying to figure out how to get these things shipped properly. And uh, I'd had a few conversations with Kyosho of America on the phone as well. Uh, shout out to Derek, I think his name was, and Don. Uh, they both gave me some tips uh, on trying to adjust it. But no one seems to have any factory settings for those two uh, grub screws that are in there. And um, even Kyosho themselves. So um, if any of you guys know or have one of these trucks or has one of those old mad crushers, um, I'd really appreciate if you could tell me what your grub screw settings are. I need to know what the one to two setting is, how many turns out from being bottomed out uh, for both the one to two and the two to three. I really appreciate it. Someone can tell me because we're about to rebuild this clutch and you know pretty much the entire transmission assembly. And I hope I don't want to I don't want to mess anything up again. I do have two uh, extra spur gears just in case we do screw up again because these parts. They're a bit hard to come by in local shops. I do have quite a few hobby shops nearby me, but Kyosho, unfortunately, you know, there's some tricky parts to get, especially the one that I got here. This is a three-speed cam. Uh, I'll get a close-up of that in here in a second. But somehow I lost this pin on the field while I was adjusting the clutch. So do be careful of that because as you uh, slide the gears, you know, back and forth to get that adjustment grub, that pin can uh, basically disappear. And I had to order this whole part just for the sake of this pin. And this thing cost, I don't know, it was like 15 bucks. But, you know, I ended up ordering all these other parts as well, directly from Kyosho of America. So anyway, enough babble. We're going to cut to the chase. Uh, we're going to take this three-speed transmission apart. I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with this one. Um, and uh, we're going to get it back on the truck and hopefully get a nice review of it. Because when I did get a shift, I think it was the one to three or two to three shift. It was one of the most beautiful sounds I'd heard uh, in RC. I do have a Revo 3.3 and we'll do another video of that. And I love the shifting sound of that uh, from one to two. I know it's only a two speed. Primarily I bought this thing because it's a three speed. That was like literally the number one reason I bought this truck. I uh, just love the sound of the shift. Um, you know, so stay tuned. You know, we might be even getting a, a Traxxas X Max, I think soon, just as serve a different purpose, be able to do it maybe in a bit more local parks where, you know, people might get a bit uh, pissed off if I was running a nitro. But 
Nitro Gang all day. Shout out to you, Hybrid. Uh, you know, watch your videos all the time. Uh, Nitro all day, Nitro till we die. So here we are. Uh, we're going to get this thing going. Again, this engine is running real good. It's broken in beautifully. We just need to get this bad boy shifted nicely. And uh, I'm going to get some nice videos on the track for you uh, of the shifts. And uh, hopefully we'll get those grub screw settings. If any of you guys know those grub screw settings, settings, please let me know. Put them in the comments. Really appreciate it. Let's get cracking on this transmission. All right. Here we are with our three-speed three, three, three speed transmission. Uh, let's take this bad boy apart now. Uh, this is the sprocket side, uh, just for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. This is the other side. Make sure you just remember the order that everything came out on. All the washers, etc. There is like a little shim in here as well. I wanna make sure you remember that. So this is the third gear. Uh, we're gonna take it apart. And as you can see, when I did that, uh, there was a shim that fell, but ignore that. Let me move, remove the shim actually for a second. Do take care of the shim, it's very thin. It's very easy to bend. Uh, but as you can see, this is the three-speed cam and it shouldn't be sliding off the shaft because there should be that pin holding it, uh, holding it in place. And there's a small hole uh, in the shaft right there that that pin is supposed to go through. And there's a pin in that cam too. And we'll get that out in a second. Should we have to get it out? I'll get it out here. Wiggle it out in a second. Get my screwdriver here. Okay, but anyway, when you are trying to adjust that uh, trans, uh, the the two to three shift from outside, usually you would undo that collar and slide, uh, push the shaft, and then slide this over, and that should remain in place so that you can adjust the grub screw on it. So number one repair is we got to get that pin in there, and then number two is, as I mentioned. Uh, it's actually the three-speed cam, or sorry, this nub here that you're going to see is stripped. And I'm going to get a close-up of that in just uh, in just a second. Let me get this cam out. There we go. So that's the grub screw that I'm talking about that you need to adjust. Um, it has a spring in there. I've already taken this whole thing apart, so you know just to kind of understand how it works. But um, and there's a spring there, and then as you can you might be able to see close there's a little ball bearing there a tiny little one and so that spring is compressed by that grub screw and that's pressing against this uh cam which which opens up uh you know based on what rpm you, you know the, the tightness so it's kind of centrifugal based um you know this part would come out this part kind of kind of hooks out and then connects or catches to this and as you can see this is stripped not sure how this happened um you know I, I was only breaking it in i hadn't done anything and perhaps it was when it was like redlining trying to shift going eh, oh, eh, oh, eh, oh. maybe that's that's somehow that happened i'm not sure so i've got a couple spares of this there's definitely that will be slipping because anytime that cam comes out it's just going to keep slipping there so that's one part that we got to replace and i've got that right here this is a three-speed spur gear um and what's this in the back? I don't know what that extra part is. Yeah, there's like an extra piece in there. I'm not even sure what that extra sprocket's for. But yeah, we're going to have to remove this bearing as well. Um, if possible, I did pick up some extra bearings in case I end up damaging them while I'm removing them. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to remove that. It looks like we've already got this kind of collar thing on the new ones right here. Uh, and so yeah, that's number one repair. And, uh, oh, sorry, that's number two repair. That should do it. As I mentioned, we just need to get that pin. I ordered this whole cam. There's the pin. I'm going to first do it with the old cam. I'm not going to put this new one in yet. I'm only going to use the pin uh, just in case I screw up while I'm setting up. And then I can always change this new one after. But the main thing is we need to keep this pin in place and not lose that. So, all right. So as you can see, pretty simple, uh, pretty simple design here. That's your first gear. That's pretty much always engaged. Uh, always turning the shaft these are not this one will only engage obviously once this clutch engages this clutch is always engaged but it will only engage engage this once that centrifugal hook kind of uh, grabs that that nub inside the gear there uh, now the second gear one was fine so let me just show you this is the second gear cam. all right I'll take this one out and 
Yeah. So the first gear obviously has no cam or any, uh, you know, yeah, no cam for it to snag because that's always driven. This is the second gear, and this one mm, has a little bit of wearing, but I think it's okay. I don't think it's it's not like anything major. I think that's fine. I'm gonna compare it to. Let me make sure the camera's focusing there for you. Uh, I'm gonna make sure. Come on, camera. Yeah, there we go. Get a bit closer, can we? Yeah, trying to get close for you guys there so you can see that. See, that one looks... Come on, man, focus. All right, that one looks okay. All right, not too bad. There is a little bit of wearing. But if we compare that now to the the three, the third gear, as I was just showing you, that thing's really stripped. You know, I can literally... If, I, if this was the cam... Come on, man, camera needs to focus. Okay, sorry about this, guys. I'm trying to get, I'll get a bad camera. I'm using my phone right now, so... I'll get a better camera as this camera as this channel goes. But as you can see, this if this was the cam, it would just keep slipping through. It's a major gouge right there. Major gouging. So we're gonna replace that with our new third spur gear. Um I'm gonna take out a second, I'm gonna take out a new one of these and just check, compare it. I honestly think that looks fine. But let's see, I've got a new pack here. This is the two-speed gear set. So this is your both your first gear, which we're fine. We don't need that, but it's got the second gear in there as well. So let me just take that out so I can see. And we can compare it and check how it compares with that old one. And do we even need to change it? Okay. This is the new second gear. Now, as you can see, yeah, that cam, yeah, I so say it comes kind of rounded like that. This one, yeah, that's, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and give it another shot with, yeah, I don't believe that's as gouged out as that other one. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try first with this, see if we can get it adjusted. And we'll save the new gears for after our adjustments, because I'm sure we might end up chewing up that a bit more inside. So... There you go. So again, I'm looking for the settings for this. If anyone knows, I'm going to be guessing, I'm going to try the two and a half setting. Someone told me about that. So right now this grub screw has been bottomed out all the way. You don't want to tighten it too much. Be careful because there's a spring in there, um, but you want to tighten it down until it basically snugs up and then uh, count back uh, counterclockwise uh, two and a half turns. That's where I've got this set right now. And um, this is the, the third gear one. And then the first gear one I've got set a little looser, so it's it engages earlier. So again, if anyone knows what the, the stock settings are or what settings you have, I'd really appreciate if you can share. But uh, we're going to get this uh, put back together now. Let's remove this pin. Get this pin out of there, man. I lost this thing. This 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 son of a yeah, this thing, man. Okay, so this is our first gear. Let's put this back together. As I mentioned, we've got this little collar here too. Don't lose that. Um, but that's our first gear. Leave that there. Remember, this is a one-way. It's, it's got a one-way bearing in it. Um, and now we're going to put our second gear. Just remembering I'm doing everything correctly. Make sure I'm not missing any parts. Yeah, this is our second gear now. I'm going to put that back in like so. And now we're going to put our... Uh, this is the two-speed uh, cam, and you can tell because it's got the kind of roller pins inside there. If you can see that, the roller bearing. Uh, so they're different, so make sure you don't mix them up because one is the three-speed and one is the two-speed. Um, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell. The three-speed one has the hole in it. Yeah, the two-speed doesn't have the hole. All right. Just, uh, yeah. So, you know, some people might make that mistake. I don't know. So anyway, put this um, three-speed, oh, sorry, the two-speed one in. Okay. Uh, remember just making sure we're doing everything properly here uh, make sure I'm not missing any washers yep so that goes in like that and then you've got that shim that I took out earlier that I mentioned a super thin shim uh, be very careful with this I kind of smashed mine because when I when I was taking it apart it ended up kind of like uh, you know kind of elevated on one of the pieces like this and we can see and then I, I put the other gear down and it smushed it so I had to flatten it out but yeah it's it's still doing its job fine but it should be laying perfectly flat no pretty flat anyway here yeah, pretty flat right around there like that make sure it's not on that little edge on the inside it's quite easily could do that and then from there we're going to now take our three-speed cam we're going to slide that over 
make sure that shim is in the right place there. Okay, put that over. There we go. And now we're going to get that those holes lined up and get that pin through. I don't know what kind of design this is of the pin, but that's what's going to hold this cam in place. So I'm just not sure how this pin even fell out. Okay. Let's see. Can I get that in there? Okay, there you go. That in nicely. Boom. Okay. I got it in. So if we need to get it out, we can probably just push it out. It went in pretty, pretty nicely there. So that's our third speed now done three-speed cam back in um, now while we've got this apart I can just show you how many turns in I've got it I'm gonna start with the two and a half um, just in case I wasn't clear before maybe I made a mistake in what I said someone said that the other Kyosho was two and a half turns from bottomed out so I'm gonna try that again if someone else has one of these please do let me know if what your settings are but as I'll show you here we'll start right about there so this is one turn two turns, two and a half turns, three turns. Yeah, okay, three turns. Yeah, I'd set this one at three turns because this one should be looser, so it's earlier. This is our one to two shift. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's do the two and a half. So we'll start right here. That's about right. That's about where it starts. That's where the spring is snug. And we're going to loosen this up. Half, one, half, two, two and a half. Two and a half there. I think that because that now looks like about the, the grub screw is about flush with the top of the threads there. So I imagine that would be kind of your loosest setting. I don't know. Um, but and now if we go to our three, three speed cam, this one, we want it to shift a bit later. So we want this one to be tighter than two and a half turns. But just to show you where it's at now, that's one turn, two turns. And yeah, I think that's where I had it about So two turns. Uh, it goes a little bit more, but that's yeah, right about there. So one, oops, I forgot. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. One, two. Yeah, we're gonna leave that one at two turns. So that one's at two and a half. That one's at two. It will shift a bit later, and hopefully, it should just need some minor adjustments from that point onward. I mean, to make sure that we don't lose that pin again because it could fall out. So anyway. From that, you just slide this back that way. And now we will need to replace our th third speed. As I mentioned, this thing's already stripped here. So let's get rid of that, get our new one. Huh. Not sure what this thing is. Anyone know? It came inside here. It's like a, um, hmm, never seen, I don't think, I don't know what that is. I don't see any of some part. I don't see a part like that on the vehicle. If anyone knows what that is, I really appreciate it if you could tell me. Some kind of tool. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Okay, so we do need to get a bearing in here. Uh, we do have our old one. I'm gonna see if I can pop that out right now. Uh, first, let me get this. Um, let's grommet out first. We need to get this thing out here. It's a great part. Maybe we can access that bearing. Collar out. So maybe I can kind of push that bearing out from the side inside there. I want to be gentle with it, of course. I don't want to don't want to damage it if possible. Let me see if I can get this bad boy out here with some grace. Hmm. No, I think it's really jammed in there. Let me get a thinner screwdriver. Let's see if that'll work. All right, let's see. Can I work this thing out? Don't think so. I just have a feeling it's just... Sorry about this, guys. Let me see what I can do. All right, I am back and I got it out. Used a little brute force. Sometimes a little brute force goes a long way and it uh, looks like it didn't damage. What's that? No, that's just a little piece of debris, piece of plastic or something. Yep, let's get that out. Uh, yeah, I just used the hammer. Uh, so yeah, if you have trouble getting that bearing out, 
and uh, you wonder how I got it out. I mean, this gear was really toast, right, with the with the cam being done. So I took my screwdriver. It's very difficult to get out otherwise. And there's a little ridge there on the inside of the gear itself. And I just placed the screwdriver right there, and uh, uh, banged on the end of the screwdriver with a with a heavy mallet. And as you can see, that's just cracked that piece through there. And I did one on the other side, and it popped out that bearing um, very easily. And it does look like our bearing is in good shape. So there's a little piece of some kind of plastic in there. Let me just clean that off. Get that, that clean before we stick it back in. That's what she said. Now, okay, I think that's fine. So there's our bearing, and uh, it does look to be operating very smoothly, and everything's great. Just making sure it's clean. There's a little particle there. Let me get that particle out. CD about that, get that particle out, you son of a gun, got him out, okay, all right, now, got our new, new third speed, uh, three speed gear, take that bearing I just removed, I'm gonna place that right in there, should just slide in, make sure you just put it in evenly, press on it evenly, should just slide in, like so. Nice and flush. Just use your hand. You don't need any tools. We're just damaging the bearing otherwise. And there you go. Okay. Some finger action there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, it's rotating nicely. Is it? Yep, it's all good. Now, get that three speed cam back on. Make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yes, so we've got our got our shim in there properly, right? From before, that should be in there. Let's check. Is the shim? Yep, the shim is in. Shim is good. Check that again. Sorry, my OCD. Uh, I'm very OCD about these types of things. All right, slide that back up. Okay, and put our gear back together. We want any oil in there? I think we're good. Should be packed. And um, let's put that back together. Should slide over. What's going on here? Well, it might be because that pin is not fully flush. It needs to be fully in. Yeah, there's a pin, as I mentioned, that pin we just stuck in needs to be fully in there so that it will fit flush inside the bearing. There, that's it. Now, when you go to adjust your three speed, uh, you know, you'll, you'll push this cam forward, essentially sliding this away and you'll be able to adjust that grub. And if that pin wasn't in there, it can fall out. Now it can fall out just from you moving this in and out. So do be careful and be aware of that. Okay. Okay. Next. So next what we're going to do is uh, put it back on the truck. So then we've got our washer here. We're gonna put that back. Let's get this back on the truck. All right, we are back now, ready to install the three-speed reassembled uh, transmission back onto the USA one. Now, one thing uh, I was trying to do was actually trying to put it back on while that bracket was still on with the, the sprocket and everything. Don't waste your time doing that. It's pretty much impossible. I was able to take it off doing that because I was missing the pin. So it was easy to slide off, but I kept trying in whatever configuration. I just couldn't get it off. And then I finally removed the the lower this kind of you know the the sprocket and diff uh, assembly uh it's just the four screws here four phillips screws one two three four and that was able to take that whole piece off so now installing this should be a breeze uh let me get this phone back on the tripod and let's get this going okay here's our three speed transmission ready to be put on here um make sure we, our bearings are still in there yep hasn't fallen out i'm gonna slide that puppy Right, might be actually, I don't know if I have to remove this fuel tank actually. Huh. Okay, one sec. All right, 
That should give us enough play, I think, just to get this in. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Got that puppy in there. Okay. Let me get that fuel tank back on shortly. So now we've got that suspended. Now we need to basically get that assembly back up here. Get that sprocket through. When I did this, the diff linkages obviously came off. So it's very easy to slide those back into there. And there's one on the other side as well. And then we're just going to screw that back on. Back in a sec. And there we have it. That three speed is now in there. Now... The way you typically adjust it is by loosening this collar and sliding the gear this way. I'm sorry, not this way. This way, that's exposing the second gear collar, as you can see. First to second, right there. And the other way would be to slide it this way. And then slip this one. It's going to be a bit tough because of the way it, it, we saw it. But yeah, there, there it is. Right. Final thing to do is to tighten up this collar. Make sure that you do have the grub against the flat side of the shaft. Um, you know, you can just kind of spin it around and see that there is a flat side. I'm going to have to move the shaft itself. There. I don't know if you can see that right there. Got a flat side just showing up there by my right index finger. Right there. So we're going to make sure that that is in contact with the grub screw. So face that upward. Right up here. And give that a tight in there. There we go. It'll kind of place itself where it needs to. Now, gonna have a little slop here and there, that's fine. But what we want to do now is also put the other collar on the other side. Don't forget that there is a washer. Got the washer, and then there's our other collar. So we're gonna go ahead and sit that, uh, put that washer in there. And then stick our collar on. Now, I'm going to be very careful in the future, hopefully, about that little pin. Hopefully, we won't have to get in and adjust it too much. But right now, I have the first to second gear set at two and a half turns and the second to third gear set at two turns. Uh, tighter, I mean, less turns or tighter, yeah, it would mean later change. And a looser would mean earlier change, and that's what we want for the first to second gear, and we want a later change for the second or third. We're still going to have to tweak with it, but we'll see when we get there. Okay, just tighten that one. There we go. That slipped on, and we're done. We need a little bit of slop is fine. In fact, is it better than having it too stiff? Uh, let's just tighten that up a little bit more. Make sure it's tight. And make sure this one, oh, come on, man. Make sure that one is tight. Perfect. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's make sure that we put our throttle linkage back as it was. Now, throttle and brake linkage. Just right about there. Get our screw back on. <coughs> that is it. Too tight there. Perfect. And we're all set. Right, everyone, I hope you found that video informative and helpful in some manner. I'm looking forward to getting this thing out uh, on the street tomorrow. Um, I do live in this suburban area and there's some construction areas where I've got some nice big stretches of road and I'm able to get this thing up and, and test out the transmission and make sure it's getting up into all three speeds. Now, again, if any of you guys can share what your, uh, your grub screw scannings are, I would really appreciate it because I can't even seem to get them from Kyosho themselves. Um, and you know, I'm already on, I you know, replaced a bunch of parts here and I really don't want to screw up any parts again. So if you guys can help me out with that, I really appreciate it. I will keep you guys updated. Um, if it's successful, then look forward to seeing another video and I'll make sure I, I bought a sound recorder specifically for the purpose of recording this thing's uh, sound engine and shifting uh, when I get out on the field. So look forward to that. I'm looking forward to recording that for you guys. Um, 
if I'm unsuccessful, then I'm gonna be back with another video asking for more help, uh, hoping that someone out there can share their settings. So anyway, guys, have a great one. I am Turok. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.